So in this review on market risk management, we will start by studying about mortgaged backed securities. So a mortgage is simply a loan with a residential property as collateral. Now, banks issue mortgages or they give out loans and the borrowers or the homeowners pay back these loans in equivalent installments. So to begin with, there is a loan amount. Let's assume $10,000 is the value of a property and that mortgage has to be paid back in 5 years and the rate of interest is 10%. Assuming the mortgage payments are annual, what will be the equivalent amount that the borrower will have to pay every year? So we can calculate that quite simply. We will enter the present value as 10,000 on the BA2 plus calculator. The number of years is given to be 5, so number of periods is 5. The interest rate per period is 10% there is nothing left at maturity. So within five years, we want the mortgage to be completely paid off. And we can always try and compute the PMT required to do so. So let's do it. Press 10,000 and press PV, press five and press N, press 10 and press I by Y, press zero and press FV and compute PMT. So the PMT comes out to be two six $38. So the bank gave a $10,000 loan and then the bank receives $2638 every year for the next five years. That is why we call the mortgage or a loan an asset for the bank. After the loan has been made, the bank is going to receive future cash flows from this loan or from this asset. Now please note that this equivalent annual amount, it can be monthly also or most of the times it is a monthly amount but for example we are considering it to be an annual amount, covers not only the interest part but also the principal part of the payment. So in these equivalent payments this $10,000 principal is also repaid back as well as the interest applicable. Now please note that the interest outstanding or interest payment in every year is simply equal to the outstanding principal multiplied by the rate of interest at issuance. Now for the first year the outstanding principal is $10,000 and the rate at issuance is, is 10%. So the interest paid is equal to $1,000. The interest amount is nothing but $1,000. The remaining amount of this 2638 payment will go on to repay the principal. So the principal repaid at the end of the first year of the mortgage will be 2638 minus 1000 that is 1638 dollars. So at the end of the first year the outstanding principal for year 2 would be 10,000 minus 1638. For year 1 it was 10,000. For year 2 it will be 10,000 minus 1638 that is 8362 dollars. So how much would be the interest payment in the second year? It would be 8362 into 10% or 836.2 dollars such that the principal repaid at the end of the second year would be 
that is about eighteen hundred and two dollars or one eight zero one point eight dollars similarly we can calculate for year three four and five so what we'll notice is that of the total payment the interest component keeps coming down whereas the principal component of this annual installment will keep going up as the principal goes down the interest on future payments would be lesser as compared to the earlier payments now this is how the payment happens on a mortgage backed security the collateral to securitize this loan that is in case the borrower is unable to pay the bank can foreclose the property or that is sell off the property and recover his money the property is a residential house <coughs> on which the loan has been taken now the interesting feature about mortgage backed securities that differs it from other securities or that brings in additional complexity is the possibility of prepayment so if the borrower so desires or if the home owner so desires he can retire this loan before the end of 5 years that is instead of repaying only 1638 dollars of principal at the end of the first year he can choose to pay back more or instead of paying only 1802 dollars of principal at the end of the second year he can choose to pay back more if he does then the interest outstanding rather the interest payment on future time periods will come down as the principal outstanding has come down because a part of the loan has been prepaid so in the coming slides we'll study more about prepayment when is it more likely to happen and what impact does it have on the cash flows and on the valuation of a mortgage backed security so in this slide we'll study more about prepayment and the factors that affect prepayment rates so please note that we are talking here about fixed rate mortgages in a fixed rate mortgage the 10% that we took for example earlier remains fixed so interest rates in the economy can change however the rate on the mortgage does not change so what determines the speed of prepayment that is how much prepayment would the borrower likely do first is the spread between the mortgage rate and the current rate so if the current rate is very high let's say it is 10% and we took our mortgage at a rate of 9% then prepayments are not likely to happen as anyways if i refinance or i take a loan again it will cost me 10% i have already locked in a rate of 9% had it been the other way around if the mortgage rate that i have locked in is for example 12% and the current mortgage rates are to the tune of 8% then prepayments are more likely as i would want to lower my cost from 12% to 8% by borrowing at 8% and repaying this earlier outstanding mortgage so the prepayments would increase as interest rates fall or the spread between the mortgage rate and the current rate increases each of the loan also determines the speed of prepayment generally we've seen that immediately after taking the loan people don't prepay a lot or they don't prepay everything the prepayment rates gradually increase over time until they reach a stable level also referred to as the seasoned level and this effect is known as seasoning so initially the prepayment speed is low as time passes more and more prepayment starts happening up till a point prepayment rate keeps increasing after which it begin it becomes constant or the loan becomes seasoned we will see this in the coming slide so it's low in the beginning keeps increasing up to a point after which it becomes constant that is the speed of prepayment vis-a-vis -vis the age of the loan if the cost of refinancing is low 
then people will likely refinance as there is no penalty or there is no extra percentage that they have to pay on refinancing. The previous path of interest rates also has an impact. So the y axis here is the interest rate and the x axis is the time. As time passes, let's say interest rates went up, then they went down, then they went up again and then they went down. So the interest rate was 7% at t equal to 2 also and at t equal to 8 also. When do you think more prepayments would happen? When the rates fall for the first time to 7% or when they again fall to 7%? That is at t equal to 2 would there be higher prepayments or at t equal to 8 would there be higher prepayments? At both times the rate was 7%. It would be more during the first fall. During the second fall to 7%, most of the people had anyways refinanced in this region. Relatively lesser amount of loans would have been outstanding at these higher rates. So the first times the, the rates correct, the prepayments and the refinancing would be higher. So the path of the interest rates also makes a difference. The level of the mortgage rates makes an impact. That is, if interest rates are low, then affordability would be higher and we've seen people buy and sell more houses and hence more prepayments and refinancing also happen. So the, when the absolute level of the mortgage rates are lower, prepayments and refinancing is higher. Similarly, when economic activity is good or economic environment is better, then there is more job turnover and more likely people buying houses, relocating to different places and hence more prepayments. We've also seen some seasonal effects, that is more home buying and more mortgages get issued in the month of spring and people don't immediately prepay. So when four or five months have passed, they start to prepay their loans as their financial condition improves. So we see higher prepayments in early fall and more issuance or more home buying in the spring in the US. So that's some qualitative aspects as to what determines the prepayment rate in a mortgage. That is the probability that you'll pay over and above your agreed upon principal or your equivalent installment. Now the speed of prepayment is defined by something called as the CPR or the conditional prepayment rate. So the CPR indicates that on an annual basis, what percent of the principal will be prepaid over and above the required repayment. So CPR is the principal repaid over and above what is required. That is, it is the annual prepayment. So if 6% is the conditional prepayment rate annually, that is, if $100 was the outstanding principal, then 6% additionally will be prepaid. Or at the end of the year, 100 into 1 minus 0 0.06, that is $94 would be outstanding. The conditional prepayment rate, remember, is an annual rate. This rate can be converted into a monthly rate, which is called the single monthly mortality or the SMM. So it's nothing, it's the same as the conditional prepayment rate, only converted into an equivalent monthly rate. So let's say $100 were outstanding at the beginning of the year. And if SMM is the monthly prepayment, then how much would be paid over and above in the first year or what would be the outstanding principal at the end of the first year? It would be 100 
into 1 minus SMM. This, will, this is what will happen after one month. SMM is the monthly rate. By the second month, this number would have gotten reduced by another SMM. By the third month, this outstanding principal would have been prepaid by another SMM because SMM is the monthly prepayment. That is, if $100 was outstanding, then by the end of the year, at a monthly rate of SMM, 100 into 1 minus SMM to the power 12 would have been prepaid. And we know the definition of CPR, that is the annual rate. So if 100 was outstanding at the beginning of the year, then at the end of the year, 100 into 1 minus CPR would have been repaid or would have been prepaid. So 1 minus SMM to the power 12 is equal to 1 minus CPR. This is how you can convert the annual prepayment rate into a monthly prepayment rate. So if C if 6% is the CPR annually, then the monthly prepayment rate can be calculated as 1 minus CPR to the power 1 by 12. And we'll take SMM this side. So SMM can be give, written as from this equation 1 minus 1 minus CPR to the power 1 by 12. So if CPR is 6%, SMM can be calculated as 1 minus 1 minus 0 0.06 to the power 1 by 12. That comes out to be 0 0.00514 or 0.514% monthly. So to understand what this means, if we had a loan with a beginning monthly balance of $50,000 and a scheduled repayment of $67 then the prepayment that is the payment over and above what is scheduled would be 0 0.005143 into the beginning balance minus whatever was the scheduled principal repayment or there would be a total principal repayment of $67 plus $260. $67 is what was scheduled as we calculated in the previous example and $260 is what is the prepayment amount. So that the outstanding balance after this month would be $55.25 minus $67 plus $260. So we studied earlier that Prepayment is dependent on the age of the loan. What we've seen is that in general, in all mortgages, prepayment happens to some extent or some prepayment is expected by the bank when he gives a loan. For example, the Public Securities Association in the US collects data about historical prepayments and compiles the expected prepayment rate or the average prepayment rate for the country. What they have on an average scene or what is referred to as 100% PSA is defined as a conditional prepayment rate that increases by 0.2% every month at t equal to zero, that is when the mortgage has just been issued, obviously not much of prepayment happens. At the end of the first month also, prepayment rate only goes up to 0.2% CPR. That is the annual prepayment rate is only to the tune of 0.2%. This keeps increasing as the loan matures or the loan seasons. By the end of the first 10 months, this prepayment rate has gone up to 2%. So we can calculate the monthly rate and the amount of prepayment in the month, but the monthly rate has increased to an annualized number of 2% by the end of the 10th month. It keeps increasing by 0.2% up till the 30th month, that is 
after you've taken the mortgage, the prepayment rate keeps increasing for the first 30 months. After 30 months, the monthly prepayment rate goes up to 6%. Henceforth, the prepayment rate doesn't come down. It just becomes constant. So this is when we say that the loan has seasoned or prepayments don't increase henceforth. So after this prepayments keep happening, but at the rate of 6%. This is the average prepayment value and is referred to as 100% PSA. In certain conditions and certain applications, you may want to model more aggressive prepayments or you feel that interest rates are expected to fall or for whatever reason, prepayments may be higher than 100% PSA. So you can model a 165% PSA whereby Prepayment increases at the rate of 1.65 times the 100% PSA. So if with 100% it was 0.2% every month, with 165% the increase would be 0.2% into 1.65 every month. With a 70% PSA the increase would be 0.7 into 0.2% every month. And the final seasoning here would happen at 6% into 1.65. And the final seasoning in a 70% PSA will happen at 0.7 into 6 or 4.2%. So these are just some guideline rates that you can use for modeling the cash flows of a mortgage backed security. Please note prepayments mean principal is coming back faster or future interest will decline. Higher prepayments mean more principal upfront, so more cash flows upfront, but some interest will be lost that will never come in the future also. So overall total cash flows will reduce because the, some interest has been lost as more principal has been prepaid upfront. So the prepayment pattern can be summarized in this expression. That is, it will keep increasing by 0.2% and then become constant at 6% after 30 months. This is the 100% PSA. So let's assume that a mortgage was issued with an equivalent monthly installment of $6,000. So $6,000 is expected to be paid every month for the next 30 years, which will repay the loan as well as the interest. So if there are no prepayments, the cash flows from the mortgage will simply be this dark black line. With 100% PSA, that is a 0.2% CPR, the cash flows would be higher in the initial periods as more principal is coming back. But they will be lower in the later periods as most of the principal has also been repaid as we paid more upfront and since the outstanding is lower there will be less interest coming as well. So with a 100% PSA the cash flow profile would look something like this. With a 165% PSA even more principal has been paid upfront. So even less would be the cash flows in the future. With a 70% PSA similarly, it would be lesser prepayments initially, so more cash flows relatively in the future, but still lesser than the no prepayment cash flows. So this is the concept of prepayment and how prepayment affects the cash flows from a bond. Mortgage backed securities are a class of securities where the underlying pool where, where the underlying is a pool of mortgages, in addition to the credit risk of a borrower defaulting on the loan, that is the homeowner can simply not be able to pay, mortgages also have prepayment risk because the borrower has the option to repay the loan early, usually due to favorable interest rate changes. From an investor's point of view, a mortgage-backed security is equivalent to holding a long position 
in a non repayable mortgage pool and which of the following so if i own two bonds bond a is a mortgage backed security which is repayable that is prepayments can happen and on this security $1000 is expected every month security b is also a mortgage backed security but non repayable and on this also the expected payments are $1000 now from the perspective of the bank who is holding these mortgages the bank is holding the mortgages because the bank is going to be receiving the payments holding security a that is holding a mortgage backed security that is repayable is equal to holding a long position in a non repayable mortgage pool that is security b plus what please answer a long american call option a short american call option on the underlying a short european put option a long american put option on the underlying now please understand in a repayable mortgage backed security the borrower can repay or he can prepay the loan in other words when he is prepaying is he buying the bond back from you you can say that he takes the bond back and pays you the principal amount or whatever is outstanding so prepayment is similar to buying back the bond or buying back the security so you had a security that would give you interest and principal once he prepays he takes that security from you not for free so he pays you the outstanding principal but then you don't have the security anymore or you don't have any claim anymore so prepaying is like buying back the bond that means you have given the borrower the option to buy back from you or in other words you have sold an option or you have given an option that allows the borrower to buy back the bond the option to buy back or the option to buy from you is what option which option is the right to buy it is a call option you have given the right to buy to somebody else that is the borrower hence you have sold the option or you are short the option he can repay in any month he likes it's not the first month or the second month that he has to repay so because he can repay any time he likes he can exercise his option whenever he likes and buy back the bond from you so it's a short american call option on the underlying we will discuss mortgage backed securities in a little more detail in in the coming slides but for now just understand that the behavior will be the same as that of a mortgage so mortgage backed security has the underlying as a pool of mortgages so a mortgage also contains a short american call option on the underlying so it is equal to b plus a short american call option suppose the conditional prepayment rate for a mortgage backed security is 6% what is the corresponding single monthly mortality so if 1 dollar was outstanding then in an year please not prepayment rate conditional prepayment rate is an annual rate so 6% will be repaid at 
the end of the year or what will be outstanding will be 1 minus 0 0.06. If SMM is the monthly prepayment, so if $1 was outstanding at the beginning, then 1 minus SMM will be outstanding after the first month of this another SMM will be repaired in the second month and what will be left will be 1 minus SMM to the power 12 by the end of the 12th month. So given the conditional prepayment rate, can we derive the equivalent single monthly mortality? It's exactly the same question. So 1 minus SMM will be equal to 1 minus 0 0.06 to the power 1 by 12 or SMM will come out to be 1 minus 1 minus 0 0.06 to the power 1 by 12 which comes out to be 0 0.514 percent remember 100 percent CPR implies that for the first 30 months the prepayment rate will grow at the rate of 0.2 percent that is the loan will become seasoned 30 months later at a rate of 6 percent a 165 percent PSR PSA implies that the prepayment rate will increase by 0.2 into 1.65 percent every month and the loan will become seasoned 30 months later 30 months later at the rate of 6 percent into 1.65 because everything is happening 1.65 times faster 70% would mean everything is happening at the speed of 0.7 times 100% PSA. Since a mortgage-backed security has a short American call option embedded in the security, the valuation of a mortgage-backed security would be like a callable bond. That is, as interest rates fall, the price of a regular bond keeps rising because the cash flows are fixed and as the discount rate comes down the price will keep going up this is the yield the x-axis and the price that is the y-axis in the case of callable bonds for example mortgage-backed securities what happens is that as interest rates fall people start exercising the call option that is people start prepaying so the price rises but not beyond a point so as interest rates keep falling the price rise starts getting capped and the price rise is capped at the strike rate for a callable bond and dependent on the prepayment rate for a mortgage backed security so as interest rates keep falling beyond a point people will simply refinance that is, they will not keep paying you that fixed high amount that you have locked in. They will repay your loan and finance at these lower rates. In regular bonds, we said that convexity is always positive. So whatever was the duration estimate in case of yield increases to the duration estimate, we had to add convexity. And we studied convexity always gets added to the price of a bond. Similarly, when yields fall, we need to add the convexity to the duration es estimate to near about get to the actual price of the bond. In the case of callable bonds, however, convexity may at times need to be subtracted. So this was the duration estimate. The actual price of the bond is lower than the duration estimate. Generally speaking, for straight bonds, it's always higher. But for callable bonds, because borrowers exercise their call option or their prepayment option, price doesn't rise. That is, we get all our money back and we have to reinvest it at lower rates. So callable bonds do exhibit negative convexity, especially when interest rates fall. That is, the convexity has to be subtracted from the duration estimate or the price doesn't rise as much as the duration estimate. Please understand what is happening. I have issued a mortgage. I'm supposed to, for example, let's say get $1,000 
every month. As the discount rate falls, as this R falls, the value of the bond should go up. But in the case of mortgages, this doesn't happen because when R falls, these thousand cash flows don't come to me. The entire money comes upfront in a lump sum and hence I don't get any interest. And that money once I get back in a lump sum will be reinvested at the lower rates only because now the interest rates are not as high as I had locked in in my mortgage. We are talking about fixed rate mortgages. Hence callable bonds exhibit negative convexity. Important concept. So mortgage investments have negative convexity which reflects the short position in an option granted to the homeowner to repay early, that is the prepayment option. This creates extension risk when rates increase or contraction risk when rates fall. Contraction risk is the risk that the prepayments will happen or my loan will extinguish too soon. Extension risk is the risk that payments will happen too late or the duration or the maturity of my loan will get further extended. So there is some anticipation of prepayment or some expectation of prepayment that we build in our cash flows, maybe corresponding to a 100% PSA for example. If rates increase, then people won't pay early or prepayment falls. As repayment falls, the length and the duration of my mortgage gets extended. This is called an extension risk. When rates fall and I don't want people to prepay because I have already locked in a good high rate. But when ra rates fall, people tend to repay early, reducing the duration and re reducing the maturity of my mortgage, which is referred to as contraction risk. Please remember from level one, Duration is defined as the percentage change in the price of a bond for a 1% change in yield and convexity is defined as the change in duration for a 1% change in yield. So in mortgages we refer to this as the effective convexity and the effective duration. So we'll take the price when the yields fall minus the price when the yields rise upon 2 into P0 into delta Y. The only difference is that now when yields fall and yields rise, cash flows can also change. In our regular straight bond valuation, cash flows didn't change so we only had to change the interest rate in the I by Y input. Now not only do the interest rates change, but the cash flows can also change. This is referred to as effective duration. Once again, percentage change in the price of a, of a mortgage backed security for a 1% change in interest rate or yields. Effective convexity similarly is defined as the change in duration for a 1% change in yields. We will now understand the concept of the option adjusted spread also known as OAS now let's assume that the term structure of the interest rates is given to us so R1 is the one year rate R2 is the two year rate R3 is the three year rate so on and so forth let's assume there is a regular bond or a treasury bond with $100 expected to come every year for the next three years. Similarly, TC is a corporate bond with $100 expected to come every year for the next three years. To compute the price of the treasury bond, we would discount it by the spot rates or the treasury rates. and 1 plus R3 to the power 3. To compute the price of the corporate bond, 
would we discount by the same spot rates or would we discount by a slightly higher rate? So please note, the price of the corporate bond will be lesser than the price of a similar treasury bond because there is credit risk and hence you would need to discount the corporate bond by a slightly higher rate and that difference is referred to as the Z spread or the zero volatility spread. Similarly to R3, we will need to add a small spread that is a slightly higher rate to compute the price of the corporate bond. So remember Z spread or zero, sp or zero volatility spread measures the credit risk in a bond. Now let's assume that this treasury bond was a callable treasury bond. So it still has $100 expected in the coming three years. However, the bond is callable. If it is a callable treasury bond, then would the price be lower than a regular treasury bond or would the price be higher than a regular treasury bond? the callable treasury versus the regular treasury or a non-callable treasury bond which has the same expected cash flows. The price of the callable treasury would be lower because of the call option as there is a short call option which limits upside. So because the price of the callable treasury is limited the price would be lower. Hence to compute the price of the callable treasury bond again I will have to discount it by a slightly higher rate or there will be some zero volatility spread. But now is this spread a measure of credit risk? So in the case of the callable treasury the Z spread is not because of credit risk, it is because of the option or it is the value or cost of the option. Similarly, if it was a callable corporate bond, then the Z spread would have been even higher because there is credit risk also and there is a call option also. So for callable bonds, please remember, the price is low for two reasons. First because there is credit risk and second because there is a call option. So the zero volatility spread has both the call option as well as the credit risk incorporated. That is simply the spread that is added to the spot rates to compute the price of the bond. To calculate the option adjusted spread, so remember the option adjusted spread is a measure of credit risk only. So whatever was the zero volatility spread from that Z spread we would have to reduce the cost of the option or the value of the option and the remaining spread will be a measure of credit risk only because right now this spread is high because it has two components. It has an option and it has credit risk. Once I reduce the option what is only left is the credit risk. So remember option adjusted spread is a measure of the credit risk of a mortgage backed security because the option value has been taken away. So if you are comparing two bonds only on credit risk then it is better to compare the option adjusted spread because that will be a measure of the credit risk only.